There is some cool architecture out there that sometimes escapes our attention. So in this series, we're going to look at those buildings which we, as architects, should know something about. Today, we're going to look at an apartment building called the Casa Girasole in Rome. It was designed by the architect Luigi Moretti and it was built around 1950. If we look at it in contemporary photographs, we might be forgiven for thinking that it's not really worth our attention. It looks a little sun bleached and tired and not really all that different from the other generally modern buildings that surround it. But when it was first built, it caught the attention of architecture watchers, probably because of how well its facade photographed, particularly in black and white. In early pictures, the facade has something of the razor blade about it. The edges are sharp. And with the external blinds fully extended, the sunlight on the surface has a shimmering effect. Although at first sight we might say that this is what we'd call a modern building, it has been identified as one of the first structures to exhibit signs of postmodernism. Postmodern architecture emerged in the 1960s as a reaction to the buildings of the modern movement, which were seen as being aloof and indifferent to the humanness of the user. The argument for the postmodern connection to the Girasole comes mainly from the facade, which breaks new ground in several ways. Let's just look at three. First, the edges of the facade are visible, as if it's not fully part of the building at all. And because the edge suggests a type of construction which is too light and too thin to be a real wall, we're struck by the idea that there's some kind of sleight of hand going on. Second, the proportions of the facade are very refined and very influenced by the work of Le Corbusier. But there is something remarkable about the sharp opening that splits the elevation in two. It's like someone has performed a very precise surgical incision. And even though the facade still clearly reads as one thing, at the same time it is also somehow two things. Third, the parapet is not horizontal. Its form suggests the pediment of a classical building. And because the main element of the facade, let's call it the screen, is raised up, this suggests the architecture of ancient Rome. Now, this may seem appropriate because, after all, we are in Rome, but it's not very modern in the sense that it's citing an historical precedent. In plan, Moretti has picked out a complex underlying grid and forced it into service. If we look at the upper floors where the apartments are located, we see that there's a quite conventional arrangement with served and servant spaces and everything feels quite wrought. There is something odd about the layout though. At first glance, it seems like the exterior walls of the apartments have been angled to give the occupant a view or some amount of direct sunlight in the way that we might find in a holiday apartment by the sea. This gives us the sensation that the building has a very direct spatial dynamic. But in fact, the angled walls don't perform this function at all. They have this shape so that they can give us the reverse view of what we were expecting. And so the plan feels a little bit eccentric. In his writings, Moretti expressed interest in the nature of architectural space. But there is a sense that the space on the interior of this building has only really been considered in plan. If there's an architectural quality to the apartment spaces, it comes from the rigour that's gone into the planning and not from a consideration of how the space is imagined in three dimensions. Moretti himself was an interesting person. He developed a theory about parametric design, but he was writing in a period before Rhino and Grasshopper. So what he means by parametric design and how the term is used today are two very different things. There are also suggestions in various written pieces about him that after the Second World War, his reputation suffered from prior association with the fascists. But he continued to work on very large-scale projects, including the Watergate complex in Washington, D.C. Uh, the person that we most associate with postmodernism, that's Robert Venturi, he had pretty strong views on this building. And as it happened, he himself designed a house, the Vanna Venturi house, where the influence of the Casa Girasole is really quite obvious. Both Venturi and Peter Eisenman have championed the Casa Girasole in well-known texts, and this has given the building something of a cult following. They see political and post-structuralist readings in the building. However, for me, the interest in this structure comes mainly from this facade. <laughs> 